The Dodge Durango is a three-row crossover with a surprising amount of charisma. But how does it do in the snow and gravel? That's coming up on this episode of Driving Sports TV. Like most of Dodge's current offerings, the Durango is a bit of a throwback. This is a big, beefy midsize SUV that features burly engine options and rear or all-wheel drive. Though it would make sense to compare it to the Subaru Ascent, Toyota Highlander, or even the Kia Sorento, I think the Durango attracts a totally different kind of buyer. Where those other crossovers tout their laundry list of features and comforts, Dodge would like you to know that you can get a Durango with a 6.4 liter V8 Hemi making 475 horsepower. Yeah! Now, can you really see Kia offering a 400 horsepower Sorento? Yeah, I don't think so. Unfortunately, we're not looking at the stupid fast Durango SRT today. Instead, we're driving the more affordable 2019 Durango GT all-wheel drive. This is a mid-range edition with a base price of $40,000. Our test car was loaded with extras, pushing price all the way to $54,655, including destination. The GT is more than just a looks package. It also comes with leather trim seats with suede inserts, heated first and second rows, a power lift gate, and a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. That puts out 295 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque through an 8-speed Torque Flight automatic transmission. EPA rates this package at 18 miles to the gallon city and 25 on the highway. Astute viewers will note that is 2 miles per gallon less than the Honda Pilot in both areas. New for 2019, the GT borrows the more aggressive nose from the RT and SRT Durangos, which is a smart choice. This is far and away the best look for the Durango, and it's nice to see an upgrade in the mid-range price. Our test car also had the $1,090 black top package, which adds gloss black badges and mirrors, along with 20 by eight black aluminum wheels wrapped in all season run flat tires. In the back, the Durango has a competitive 17.2 cubic feet of cargo capacity with all three rows up. Fold down the small seats and you get 47.7. With everything lying flat, you're looking at 84.5 total cubic feet. Like the Highlander, the Durango also features a secret cubby just under the floor. If you do need to tow large items, there is a class four receiver hitch hidden under the back bumper, as well as a tow brake controller for the driver. This is all part of the $1,200 towing package, which also includes load leveling suspension. The towing limit on this configuration is 6,200 pounds, which is really good considering the competition tops out at only 5,000 pounds. Need more? The $63,000 SRT edition can haul up to a whopping 8,700 pounds. Not bad for a unibody crossover. Second row passengers are treated to a dual screen DVD entertainment system. This does cost an extra $1,995. But honestly, I think an investment in a pair of iPads is probably a better deal these days. And that's not just a complaint leveled at the Durango. That pretty much goes for all in-car entertainment. Just buy iPads or Amazon Fires, or whatever you're into. That's fine, but those $2,000 in-car entertainment systems, it's just not good money well spent. However, that said, my kids who do have iPads, yeah, they get totally thrilled whenever they see an entertainment system in these cars that I'm testing. I, I don't know why. You will note that these second row seats are captain's chairs. Yes, the Durango only seats seven, which is one less than some other three rows. However, the extra shoulder room is nice. There's also USB sockets for charging, a power inverter with AC for gaming consoles, and of course the second row is heated and passengers have their own aircon. Up front is an interior that could easily be mistaken for a Dodge Challenger, because that is in fact a shot of a Dodge Challenger. Okay, show me the Durango. Challenger, Durango, Challenger, Durango. I think you get my point. The gauges here are digital, and unlike other car makers that smoothly integrate digital data along with physical dials, the Durango just sticks a big square right in the middle. It's kind of funny, actually. Now, this may not be the slickest of integrations, but it works. Drivers can easily select various data points as well as get the status of the advanced safety system. 
And that brings me to the next add-on. Bundled as part of a $2,500 technology group package, the Durango has adaptive cruise control with full stop support, collision brake assist, full speed, forward collision warning, and lane departure warnings. Unlike some other crossovers in this class that have semi-autonomous driving capability, much like the Volvo and the Subaru, here lane departure is pretty basic, giving you a nudge back into the lane when you cross the line. It is better than nothing, and I am glad to see it in the Durango, but their implementation still has a ways to go before it's as good as the competition. The center of the dash is dominated by an 8.4 inch touchscreen display. This is of course part of the $2,500 premium group bundle. This also adds power sunroof, upgraded speakers, and a subwoofer. And that subwoofer has way too much sub thump. Everything had sub, I even turned it way down and it's still boom, 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 way too much. That package also adds on 4G LTE hotspot and navigation. The built-in nav is actually pretty good with easy access to quick POI searches and traffic data. If you want to use Apple or Google Maps or even Waze, CarPlay and Android Auto are also included. In all modes, the system is very responsive and it's basically a system I really like. Oh, and of course, switching into reverse turns on the rear view camera with tracking lines. The steering wheel is wrapped in nice leather and it includes the smallest paddle shifters ever seen in a production car. A weird thing with Dodge Chrysler vehicles is that they have audio on the back of the steering wheel here. That unfortunately gets in the way of doing proper paddle shifters. However, they do give a nod to performance and give me these little guys right up here. Oh, they're so cute. Okay, let's put it in a manual and see how fast these shift. Four, three, four, three. Actually, it's pretty quick. Honestly, I would prefer full paddles in lieu of little stereo controls, but you know, hey, at least they added them, right? Unique among its competition, the all-wheel drive system in this Durango GT is actually primarily a rear wheel drive system. In fact, it only sends power to the front wheels when it needs it. That is, of course, directly opposite to the systems found in the Honda Pilot and the Toyota Highlander, which are both front wheel drive by a system. So being that it is mostly rear wheel drive, this gives the Durango a much sportier feeling off the line. Just how sporty? Let's do a zero to 60. Let's go ahead and pull off. This is mostly a level road. Um, going ahead and putting it in sport. Uh, traction control is on and I'm going to leave the transmission in drive. I'm going to preload with the brake. Three, two, one, and go! Ooh, 20, 30, 40, uh, a little slow here, 50 and 60. Mm, not bad. Considering this is the mid-range, non-V8, this is just a V6, but you know, I think that was pretty respectable. Nothing to write home about, but respectable. Now that might have something to do with the fact that the Durango is more than 500 pounds heavier than the Honda Pilot. Yes, it's a real porker. That's about 5,000 pounds of car plus driver. Makes good noises though. For a large crossover, handling is actually pretty good. And keep in mind, this is a three row SUV and not a small one at that, but it still takes the corners. And when I lay into the throttle while going around this tight corner here, you can feel that back bias really kick in, which makes this really a lot of fun. Sounds good too, even with a V6. I think it's abundantly clear that the Durango doesn't target off-road enthusiasts. Its audience is more inclined to journey through the city canyons than real canyons. Drivers that need serious off-road capability are more likely to be interested in another car built on the same platform and actually built in the exact same factory. And that is the Jeep Grand Cherokee. If you want to climb mountains, get that. Still, this Durango GT did come with all-wheel drive and a little trail road never hurt anyone. So let's see how it does. The Durango is interesting in that it is built to be a rear-wheel drive vehicle, and 
with the added ability of all wheel drive. So what that means is that it's primarily a rear wheel drive rig. Now that traction control cannot be completely turned off. Oh, there, and now I use the back for rotating. You really gotta lay it in. Nice. Still, tossing around the corners, it's not really what a Durango is all about. Honestly, I expected more drama than what the Durango delivered. Much of the sliding was prevented because just like most new cars, even when you switch traction control off, it's not totally off. And on gravel, the Durango stability system gives no quarter. So we went all the way to the top of Snoqualmie Pass to try to find some snow to have some fun with this Durango. Problem is, it hasn't really snowed much lately. And uh, on top of that, it's plowed and uh, most of the snow that's been on the surface has melted off. So we were able to find a small patch of ice. And what I will do here is an acceleration run so you can see just how this all wheel drive system handles slippery conditions. Uh, maybe we can learn something in the process. So I have traction control on. I'm gonna turn sport off uh, because that's not the nature. Uh, you ready? I'm ready. Because keep in mind, this is different than most mainstream unibody SUVs. Most of those are front wheel drive and only engage the rear wheels when they need it. This one turns that around and is mostly rear wheel drive, only engaging the fronts when they need it. So let's see how it does this. Um, I'm just gonna mosh the throttle and see what it does and go. Oh, I felt wheel, 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 now forward. So it does a good job of instantly applying the uh, torque to where it's needed, front to back, back to front. I could feel the wheels trying to find some grip, but it got us out of there pretty quickly. The 2019 Dodge Durango is a rig that I really like in spite of its shortcomings. It's big, heavy, and when you add on a few extra options, it can get really expensive really fast. Still, the GT does deliver a nice package starting at just under $40,000. If you care less about all the extras but want a three row that's still fun to drive, the Durango GT might just be the crossover you've been looking for. However, if you also want something super modern with great semi-autonomous driving capabilities and every bell and whistle on the planet, yeah, yeah, don't get the Durango. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Would you take this rig off-roading? Post a comment below. Also, be sure to share and like this video, and I promise we will keep making more.